Hello and welcome to another Intro to Programming tutorial. This is Saad Yusuf and I will going to be talking about arithmetic operators in this tutorial. These arithmetic operators are only specific to Visual Basic. So as you go from one language to the other, the list of the arithmetic operators will vary. Some of the common arithmetic operators that are to be found across the board are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. However, here is the list of the arithmetic operators in Microsoft Visual Basic. We have the addition operator, we have the subtraction operator, we have the multiplication operator, but we have two sets of division operators. We have an exponent operator, which is used for to the power, and we have a mod operator, which is the short for modulus, which gives you the remainder after division. In the next slides, we're going to be looking at each one of these operators in a little bit more detail, and then towards the end, we're going to be doing an example using uh, Visual Studio Microsoft Visual Basic console application to see these operators in action. So, here is the next set. From your math classes, uh, you probably would have learned about this PEMDAS, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, where P stands for parentheses, E stands for exponent, M for multiplication, D for division, A for addition, and S for subtraction. In this list, it's pretty much about the order of operations. That means if parentheses comes then parentheses takes precedence over all other operations. Exponent then comes next, which takes precedence over all other remaining ones. Multiplication and division are at the same level, so you simply go from left to right. And similarly, addition and subtraction is exactly the same. You go from left to right. Multiplication and division are at the same level of priority, so if they both come in the same operation, you simply go from left to right. Similarly, for addition and subtraction, if they come in the same operation, you go from left to right. So now let's look at some of the examples. Now, in this slide, you're going to be looking at an example. The first example is 4 plus 5 equals 9, exactly the same way as it happens in mathematics. 6 times 7 is 42, 8 minus 4 is 4, 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Now here we have the division symbol that I'm using, which is used for decimal division. Now 8 divided by 4 is a whole number, so it does not really matter. It's going to give you a 2 as an answer. And here 4 divided by 8 will going to give you 0.5. Because of this operator, it will going to preserve the decimal places. So these operations are exactly the same as they may happen in mathematics that will going to be happening over here. Now here we are going to be looking at a list of the order of operations when multiple operators are to be found in an expression. Let's look at the first one here. 4 plus 5 times 6. Now here 5 times 6 will going to be evaluated first which equals 30. Then 30 will going to be added to 4 to give you the answer 34. Now let's look at the next set of operation, 5 times 6 divided by 10. Now since multiplication and division are at the same level, therefore first we're going to be doing 5 times 6, which will going to give us 30. Then 30 will going to be divided by 10 to give us 3. Now in the last example, which is exactly the same as the first one, but now with the inclusion of parentheses, addition will going to happen first. So we're going to have 4 plus 5, which equals 9. Then 9 will going to be multiplied by 6 to give us the answer of 54. So the order of operations that you have learned in your math classes still holds true. Now let's go to, come down to exponents. So exponent, which is the second one in line, it's done with the help of this half symbol, which can be produced uh, if you press and hold the shift key and press number 6, which is on your keyboard. So now here we have 5 exponent 2, which is interpreted as 5 times 5. So it is 5 squared. The answer will going to be 25. If exponent comes in a mixed operation, then exponent takes precedence over multiplication because it's a higher order operator. So here, 3 times 2 will going to be equal to 9. And then the result will going to be multiplied by 4 to give you the answer 36. Now about division. If we use the forward slash, that means the slash leaning forward, 4 divided by 8 will going to give you 0.5. But if we do the backward leaning slash, which is 4 divided by 8, the answer behind the scene will be computed as 
five, but it will going to truncate the decimal. So the answer that you're going to be getting will be just zero. Now in the third example, we have 21 divided by six. So the answer is 3.5. But if we use this division symbol, it'll truncate the 0.5 and I'm just going to give you back the number three. Now, here is the modulus. The modulus gives you the remainder after the division. So let's say if the problem is 27 divided by 4. So it basically divides 27 by 4. 4 times 6 is 24. So 6 is the quotient. Therefore, it just gives you the quotient. Since I use this division symbol, it does not give me 6.5. Now with the mod, when I do 27 mod 4, it still performs the division, but it gives me the remainder after the division. So things like, if I would like to see if the number entered by the user is an even number or not, I need to divide the number by 2. However, here I'm going to be modding the number by 2, and I'm going to be checking to see if the remainder comes out to 0. If the remainder comes out to 0, it's an even number. Otherwise, it's not an even number. Or if I'm checking for leap year, which comes after every 4 years, I'm going to be dividing it by 4. And then if the remainder is 0, that means it's a leap year, until and unless it's a centurion year, like year 1900, 2000, 2100, 2200, year 1000. Those are the century years. In that particular case, I would have to divide it by 400 or mod it by 400. Because for example, year 1900 gets completely is, is completely divisible by 4, but it was not a leap year. So that's why to overcome these problems, we mod them by 400. So that's where basically you will going to use your modulus operator. So now let's turn to Microsoft Visual Studio. Let's pick a console application, and this will going to be working with arithmetic operators. Now let me zoom in, and we're going to be doing our application here. Now if you may remember from earlier tutorials, in order to throw the output onto the screen, we use system dot console dot right line. So this is how you write an output to the screen. So here, if I want to concatenate, I'm going to use my 3 plus 4 equals to. So I'll use my concatenation symbol, which we learned in the last tutorial, which is 3 plus 4. So anything outside of the double quotes, anything outside of the double quotes is up for interpretation to be treated as evaluation. So now we're going to be running our debugging without start. So that's just so that the screen holds here. And as you can see in the output, the 3 plus 4 equals 7. So it basically adds the two numbers. Now we're going to be doing other sets of operations here. Uh, let's say 3 minus 4. It should basically do this one. Now we're going to try this one again, but we're going to be subtracting smaller number from larger number. So let's say 30 minus 4. Then let me do 3 times 4. Then let me try 3 divided by 4. So I'm going to use both sets of divisions so that you could see the difference between how one division works from the other. And then we're going to try to do 3 to the power of 3, which is 3 times 3 times 3, which should come out to 27. So 3 to the power of 3. And then we're going to try to do a mod example, the same mod example that we did um, in the PowerPoint. So that was 27 mod 4. So this will be 27 mod 4 just so that everything is in vision let me stretch this out so that you could see everything that we have written out here so we have used the addition subtraction in two different example multiplication division exponent and mod now let's run this and let me now hold the screen by doing control f5 or I could do debug start without debugging either of the two and here you can see the outputs that 3 plus 4 comes out to 7 3 minus 4 is negative 1 30 minus 4 is positive 26 3 times 4 is 12 3 
four, uh, forward slash 4 equals 0.75, but 3 backslash 4 equals 0 because it truncates the decimal. 3 to the power of 3 is 27, and 27 mod 4 is 3. So that's where we basically tested these operations. Now one last test which we're going to be trying to do with the parentheses. So without parentheses, if I do 3 plus 4 times 6. So 3 plus 4 times 6. So it should basically interpret the multiplication first. So 4 times 6, which is 24, plus 3, which is 27. Now we're going to try to do the same one and we're going to put parentheses around 3 plus 4. And that's what basically we'll be doing in both places because this will going to be displayed on the console as it is and this is what basically will going to be computed. So now 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 times 6 is 42. So that should basically give us different sets of output. As you can see over here, 3 plus 4 times 6 is 27, plus 3 plus 4 in parentheses, which is 7 times 6, that is 42. So that's how you can basically be using these arithmetic operators in Microsoft Visual Basic Console Edition. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching this video tutorial.